Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers Plus Me, episode 45. I'm Enigmius, and today, it's a fat chocobo. We're taking a bit of a break from the Atlas. The Atlas is still way over there. We've made a lot of progress, but I needed a break. We've been spending so much time on it, and this idea jumped into my head. I just had to follow, uh, follow it to fruition, and this is <laughs> what we got. The Fat Chocobo. This came from a number of different things floating around. I saw someone that made a mining ship that looked like a penguin. That was absolutely fantastic. And then we were talking after the last episode in the comment section briefly about the canary, which is over here, that we called the Fat Canary because it had this little wee tiny beak on the front and this great big fat head. And then for some reason it just jumped into my head, we need to make a Fat Chocobo. And it needs to carry things, because that's what fat chocobos do. So that's what we did. We're going to take a brief tour of it. There's actually going to be a blueprint available for this specific ship. It'll be in the information box below the video, the link to that blueprint. So you can make this on your own. We're going to show you what's available and uh, give you some ideas if you wanted to make some modifications. So the only current entrance to the fat chocobo currently is through the mouth. But before we go, we're just going to look at the claws, the front claws, because it is kind of like a giant giant chicken. It's got front claws that are actually thrusters and landing gears. If you wanted to, for example, give the choco an exam uh, on the underside, you could do that. You could plant it on the landing gears and uh, and you'd have to be very careful because the, the thrusters on here won't lift it very well. So you need to roll it. <laughs> you need to roll it from its seated position to its prone position uh, very carefully and then you can you can do that you can have the the landing gears there hold it in place so we've got some eyes that are just panes of glass we've got the little tuft of feathers on the head and the little floppy wings on the sides i could have done all kinds of crazy stuff with rotors and you know but we we know better than that we know we don't have to push our luck this is more the cookie jar kind of thing than the actual functioning let's make everything move the way it's supposed to thing you see he's got a little tongue it's red this light is maybe a little too red. It was supposed to be like a, like basically if you had a light in the back of your throat, how would it look? That's so supposed to be what it looked like. Did not too bad on the yellow. It's kind of the deep, deep, dark red, but could be a little bit different. You can change that if you want. The blue ones here kind of give the, the eyes at a bit, bit of a blue backlighting at night. It's very subtle blue backlighting, but you can see it. And the control seat is up here, the flight seat for controlling, but you should notice when you hop into this thing, there's a bulkhead in the way. It's not meant to be flown from the, the actual pilot seat view. It's meant to be flown from the the chase chocobo view. You can get around and fly. We'll take it for a spin in a minute, but first we want to uh, take a, an appropriate look at what's going on inside. I didn't want that view for that guy. So we've got uh, eight gyros. Since we're looking at them right now, it's very maneuverable. It's not a fast ship to accelerate or to slow down <laughs> keep that in mind but it's very maneuverable it can turn very quickly this one is set up to carry hydrogen it's got five large ship hydrogen tanks in it if you wanted to carry cargo instead it's very simple matter of replacing the hydrogen tanks with large cargo containers it's very very simple straightforward transition just keep in mind you may not be able to lift the ship <laughs> if you've got five full large cargo containers inside. So you may want to limit the number of cargo containers that you put in place or add more thrusters. See down here, we've got three large atmospheric thrusters and there's room to add, uh, I would say one, two, three, four more with a very minimum of jostling and kind of moving things around in order to make it happen. I, I just, I don't know if seven would be enough to carry the five large cargo containers full of goods. So just keep that in mind. If you're changing it to carry cargo, you can do the combination of reducing the number of containers available alongside increasing the amount of thrust, but just be wary of it that it might not actually be able to carry everything that you might want it to. Around here, you can see we've got all of our thrusters. I could have done interior facing thrusters and tried to do some testing with the thruster um, damage rule. To be honest, I didn't really feel like it. If you want to take these off and replace them elsewhere on the inside, have them facing the interior so that you don't have to have holes 
on the outside of the chocobo. That's something you could mess around with as well. Easy enough to do. Large reactor provides enough power to keep the thing going, but make sure you just don't run out of fuel when you're flying because that would be absolutely catastrophic. And you can see there's a lot of bulkheads in here that are designed to basically provide additional connections between the important components like thrusters and reactors and the hull itself without relying on the blocks that they're sitting on. Obviously the thrusters are not sitting on anything, there's a big open spot here, but things like the reactor, um, the cargo containers, things like that, we wanted to make sure that they are adequately secured to the hull without relying on the stuff down here because if anything is going to take damage in day-to-day -day use it's going to be the bottom plating that we've set up just to kind of close it in a little bit uh, because of the ground clearance which is so incredibly low it's a half a block above the ground when it's sitting on its landing gear so just keep that in mind over here as well you can see we've got the conveyor and the tubes we're already passed by this but we can take another quick look at it uh, conveyor tubes and a connector down here so that you can actually land this on a station or a ship and uh, transfer stuff to and from the containers. It's kind of important that you be able to do that. I thought that it might be kind of cute and interesting to uh, have the mouth set up as a connector as well so that you can feed it from the mouth and it'll go into the containers. There's no reason you can't do that. You'll just need to come up with another entrance and exit for the ship. This is not intended as a space uh, ship. It's designed for use in atmosphere conditions. If you want to use it in space, you need to keep in mind that it's not sealed. And you'll have to kind of account for that in either making sure that you've got enough oxygen and oxygen tanks or you close in the bridge area or you seal the hull, which kind of tough to do down there. But you get the idea. So keep it in the atmosphere or watch out for your oxygen. So we're going to take another uh, quick... Actually, let's take... Is, was there anything... I don't think there was anything left outside to look at. I think we kind of covered it. It's very simple. He's fat and round, and he's sitting on the ground, uh, very close to the ground. So let's just take him for a quick spin, and we'll see what he can do. Now, he's, you'll notice the lights on the underside. Uh, they're not actually green. The lights are yellow, but because they're shining onto a blue surface, they look green. I See, I've got the ground effects on the fat chocobo. He's styling. These are the holes for the thrusters I was talking about down low. And also you can see just how low to the ground this thing is when it's sitting on its landing gears. It's had half a block off the ground is the fat chocobo. So we're actually going to have to turn on the shenanigans so that I can kind of see what I'm doing here. And we're going to release... Release the landing gears, and the fat chocobo takes flight. He holds his own once he's uh, up in the air, and you can see he spins on a dime. But just be careful, you get so carried away that before you know it, you're kind of askew. Just ever so slightly askew, and then all of a sudden you're dragging his butt across the ground, and pieces start flying off. So just be a little bit cautious. Like I say, it's not fast to accelerate. It's not fast to decelerate, but it does use the uh, claws on the front for the decelerating. Uh, the main thing is when he's empty, he's got plenty of lift, which is kind of fun. And you can kind of do the roly-poly. <laughs> it's a fun build. If you can't have fun with a fun build, what can you have a fun with? It's uh, You get him kind of... Going a little bit forward and then you rock him back and forward. Doom de doom de doom de doom. He's a fat chocobo. And he's managing to hover, but he's not on his claws. He's de doom de doom de doom de doom. And he's just so fat. And you, you release the key with the inertial dampeners on and he comes to a stop. Probably the best thing for him is <laughs> if this thing was full. You would have to leave yourself, like, probably at least one to two kilometers stopping distance. <laughs> Just because he's so slow. He's he's trying so hard. He's building up speed. He can get up to the same speed as any other ship, but it takes him forever to do it. So you have to keep that in mind. And really, for safety's sake, I would keep him a little bit higher off the ground just so that you're not accidentally dragging him on the terrain. See, we're pretty safe on the ice lake here. If you've got like a big sheet that you've made as part of your your planetary station that he can hover around on, or an ice lake, he's fine. But if you start moving him around on the rough terrain, he's going to take some damage on the underside. It's pretty much given. There's uh, not much you can do to avoid it. It's functional. Yes, it will work. Yes, it will carry a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll probably need some like, extra thrusters, like I've been saying. 
but still carry a lot of, of stuff. It's not entirely practical, it wasn't intended to be, and it's a fat chocobo, so it's hard to go wrong with a fat chocobo. I don't know how much longer this guy's going to be in my world, but the blueprint is going to be up on Steam for as long as it ever feels like staying up there. If you want to get that, like I say, grab it from the information box below the video. Next episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Atlas. Uh, what I'm hoping will be complete hull, with the exception of the gantries for the mining system. So we're going to take a look at the hull. We're going to take a look at what, if any, problems we're having with the gantries. Maybe they'll already be on, and they'll be tested, and they'll be fantastic. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit about tuning the wheels because it's getting to be about that time where we're going to have to lower it down to the ground and see how well it fares on the wheels that we've got and any changes we make to the lift and bumper wheels on the front and back. So there's there's still lots to talk about with the Atlas. I'm just glad that the hull is like 95% done. So if you want to be notified when I add those and other videos, as always, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on social media. Links for social media is also in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.